Hi and welcome back. As promised, part two of my new SPFs. I'm actually going to go through SPF 30s this time. I'm going to talk about the difference between an SPF 15, a 30 and a 50 because we had 50s a couple of weeks ago. I'm going to talk about new products on the market. I'm going to talk about physical sunscreens, so purely mineral sunscreens, which I know a lot of you have asked about. There's a lot more within SPF 30 than some existing SPF 30s that are just amazing. Now, why are SPFs somehow seen as the poor relation along with SPF 15s in terms of protection? Because to be honest, there's not a lot of difference between the amount of protection you get between an SPF 30 and an SPF 50. So, so there's some simple rules. An SPF 15 offers 93% protection. So applied properly, let's do the two finger rule again, as in my last video and as on Instagram recently. An SPF 30 offers 97%, so from 93 to 97%, and an SPF 50 is 98%. So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, whoa, so an SPF 30 isn't twice the protection of an SPF 15 and that's because it, the protection doesn't work that way. It works as a percentage protection of the amount of sunlight it lets through. So if you consider that an SPF 15 blocks 93% of the sun, which means that seven out of every hundred photons, that's unit of light energy, gets through an SPF 15 applied properly. Most of us don't apply it properly, obviously. We probably use around half of what we should use. An SPF 30 uh, offers 97% protection. So what you're getting is not an increase in protection in terms of doubling the amount of protection, but you are actually cutting down the amount of light getting through by half at least. So instead of letting seven photons per 100 photons through, applied properly on an SPF 30, you're allowing only three photons through per 100 photons. So in that sense, you are getting twice the protection. See what I mean there? It's not so much about what it's lit keeping out, it's about what it's allowing through. And that's an interesting one because by the time you get into daily use of SPF 30s, SPF 50s, you are talking to an audience here that isn't just using an SPF when they're on holiday, obviously. They're seriously into their skincare and they want the best quality protection there is. And then an SPF 50 is 98% protection, which means that the, the increase is tailing off slightly. So you're, only, you're getting through two photons per 100, obviously 98% protection. Um, but that's only actually one extra photon being protected in terms of an SPF 50 as, a, as opposed to an SPF 30. But that's also an increase of a third if you see what I mean. Don't think about it in terms of uh, what percentage it's protecting, it's in what percentage it's allowing through. That's the argument anyway, why an SPF 50 is more important than an SPF 30, but I think the main argument is none of us are applying enough of it. You're probably only getting half that percentage, so really you're going at around an SPF 25 if you apply an SPF 50 to feel comfortable on your skin. You saw me, right? You saw me doing the two fingers is enough for your face and your ears, an extra finger for a bald head, an extra finger for a neck and an extra finger from your chest. Well, if you line up a squirt of SPF down all of those five fingers, that's a lot. If you see derms applying it, like Sam Bunting, um, they essentially just turn into sort of slightly sort of shiny white ghosts, which if they love that look, it's great. It's just not a very comfortable feeling for me, which is why I tend to prefer most SPF 30s. The minute you go down to an SPF 30, you are going to get a much broader selection of textures. You're also going to get physical mineral sunscreens, which are important if you've got sensitive skin and if you want to put them quite close to your eyes because they tend not to migrate. The difference between an organic stroke chemical sunscreen and a physical stroke mineral sunscreen is one is made of uh, micronized minerals, titanium, zinc dioxide, sometimes iron oxide, and then the chemical organic filters, and it's such a weird use of chemical versus physical, organic versus mineral, because uh, obviously organic just means organic chemistry rather than organic food. Um, and this is why SPFs are confusing, but anyway, I'm just giving you all the information so you can take away what you want, fast forward what you want. The important thing about that is they are made, tend to be made in a lab. So rather than taken from a mine and micronized, they're made in a lab. One isn't better than the other in terms of protection. In fact, you tend to get better broad spectrum with a combination of chemical organic sunscreens than you do with a physical sunscreen. 
There used to be an idea that at one point physical sunscreens purely blocked, they actually, actually sort of almost were like a mirror and they bounced back the sun's energy. They don't, they work in similar ways, they still absorb it and turn it into um, heat energy in the skin, but they take the damaging energy out of the UV rays. So let's look at the new products. The simple facts to remember are an SPF 15 gives you 93% protection, an SPF 30 gives you 97% protection, and an SPF 50 gives you 98% protection. So let's have a look at the SPF 30s that I'm loving this summer. Right, this is obviously the hottest SPF currently around, and this is La Roche-Posay Hyalu B5 Aqua Gel SPF 30. So this is part of their Hyalu B5 Hyaluronic Acid range, which I absolutely love. And B5 is panthenol, it's a really calming, soothing vitamin. Add to that the hyaluronic acid, and what you end up with is a gel SPF that is all kinds of gorgeous. Actually, let me just show you exactly what a finger amount of SPF is. So that's a finger amount of SPF. So you need two of those for your face. Let me show you this SPF. So it's exactly that. It's a hyaluronic acid gel and it's gorgeous. It goes on really lightweight, sinks in in seconds, feels like a hyaluronic gel, feels like a beautiful hydrating humectant rich gel, will suit oily skins, guys, children, I mean, if they did in a larger one for children, it would be perfect, it really would. Don't be surprised if this doesn't come out in an SPF 50 later this year or next year. It's gorgeous. I can feel the, the hyaluronic acid on my skin, giving it that instant plumping glow, plus the SPF 30. By far and away, my favorite SPF to be launched this year. I love it. Now, what's interesting about SPF 30s is even though they are slightly demonized in the press, as in they're not as good as SPF 50s, some really serious skincare companies, i.e. La Roche-Posay, have made really good ones this year. I want to introduce you to Tioxane. Tioxane is a high-end cosmeceutical in-clinic skincare range. They actually make fillers as well, and they use reticulated hyaluronic acid, which is a form of really easily absorbed chopped up into particles, hyaluronic acid, short chain hyaluronic acid. And this is their Advanced Perfecting Shield SPF 30, and it's gorgeous. It's got a tint to it, but it's that sort of peachy tint, which I think most skin colors tend to look good in. And I've seen this work on all skin tones, I really have. This is beautiful. This is like your perfect lightweight glow serum. I mean, just sinks in in seconds it sits beautifully under makeup lightly fragranced but not bothersome that's also lightly fragranced by the way but not in a bothersome way it's great now obviously this is for head and neck and chest it's not cheap but it's beautiful if you have the budget go and check out that product i really like it there's another product here that from a skincare company that i want you to check out and that's the new hourglass equilibrium sunscreen broad spectrum SPF 30, day fluid. And the reason I want you to look at this is because it is actually a serum, look at that. So it's seriously, seriously liquidy. So it spreads really, really, really evenly and quickly over the skin, but in a way <laughs> that's a bit tempting for you to not have enough of it on. So make sure you do the two fingers before you start rubbing it in. It's got more actually, so in, in terms of this is the lightest for oilier skin, this is the next one going up. This is actually, despite being a fluid, it is quite, quite moisturizing. I wouldn't say it was oily, but a little goes a long way, which is a little bit tempting to not use the amount you're supposed to use. But if you're looking for a step up in terms of skincare, both the Tioxane and the Hourglass ones are lovely. And then in terms of new products, I want to introduce you to the Eevee Daily UV Face Mousse. Now this is lovely. This is so lightweight. And I've left this till last, although technically it's as lightweight as this. Um, the problem with it is, how do you get enough of a mousse? Because you can't technically just go, oh yeah, let's do my fingers. I mean, you'd have to do that much on a finger with a mousse. Um, but it does go on really easily and it spreads really easily. And there's also an SPF 30 sunscreen mousse for the body. Um, and the reason I say that much for a finger of mousse is because obviously it's all air. Look what that disappears to. So it's lovely. That's really, really, really nice. I have to say, I do think Evie are doing really interesting things in skincare at the moment. And that would be my choice for my body and chest. I 
probably, even though it's formulated for the face, I probably wouldn't use it on the face only because I wouldn't trust myself to put enough of it on. But oh my goodness, mousse sunscreen, hello, happy days. Not sticky, super lightweight, easy to spread around. The fact that it's easy to spread around though worries me that you're gonna get enough of it on. So remember to do the big fat mousse finger for that one. And there's the Evie sunscreen mousse. That's that size, they do a larger size as well. Now, they're my new and interesting and one existing SPF 30s for the face. Let's talk about physical SPFs because so many of you asked me for this. Now, the whole point of a physical SPF is that it's better for sensitive skin, simply because it tends, the mineral particles in it tend to sit on the face or sit on the body and not really migrate. They tend not to move with sweat and movement as much as a chemical SPF, so they're better to use around the eyes, which is the reason that the SkinCeuticals SPFs for uh, around the eyes are amazing, they really are. So let's start with Dr. Dennis Gross All Physical Lightweight Wrinkle Defense SPF 30, and it's lovely. It's actually quite moisturizing. Um, it's one of those slightly sort of runny serums, a little bit, in fact, it's very, very similar to the hourglass in terms of texture. So it looks like that. Nice and runny, but as usual with an SPF, a physical SPF, it's got a slight cast to it. I do feel sorry for um, uh, women of color, anybody that's got darker skin probably than mine, because it's really hard to find a good physical sunscreen. And I like a physical sunscreen for my face because I don't like that itchy, scratchy, stingy eye thing. Um, that doesn't give a white cast. You'll find it easier in an SPF 30 than you will in an SPF 50. So you just need to maybe give it a little bit of an extra rub in, but it does have an initial slightly silvery cast. And when the sun hits it, can you see the difference in the color of my hands there? When the sun hits it, it does tend to give a slightly silvery sheen. Now, the reason that titanium dioxide and zinc dioxide do that is because they are the, the mineral powders that are in mineral powders and foundations. So they do have a tendency to give you that slight glow, which is great in makeup, but tends not to be in SPFs. Um, but I love it. It is a really nice product. It's quite moisturizing, trust me. Uh, Kate Somerville has a brand new SPF 30 that is 100% mineral. So this is the Kate Somerville Daily Deflector SPF 30, and it's really lovely. You know, the thing about Kate is she knows how to formulate really lovely skincare. I, I absolutely love the pump action effect. And when it comes out, it's a, a very moisturizing, lightweight cream gel. And again, we get the silver finish. You are gonna get that with a physical SPF, you really are. I mean, it does go in, and bearing in mind I've got really white hands at the moment, if it's giving a slight silver cast on my skin, it is going to give a silver cast on anybody any darker. Tis, tis lovely. Um, I really like, I mean, I mentioned the Kate Somerville SPF 50 spray last time, and I do think that she's going out of her way to create nice, easy to use SPFs that we can use every single day. Now I've got two here that are interesting, and there's one here that actually was launched a couple of years ago that I really like, but I tend not to mention simply because of the marketing of it is slightly problematic, and that is the Ren Clean Screen Mineral SPF 30, and it's a mattifying face SPF and it's lovely. It's really, really lovely. My problem with it is the way it's marketed because Wren have jumped on the SPFs ruin marine reefs and it's scientifically contentious. Don't take my word for it. Follow Lab Muffin. She's amazing. Michelle has taken to um, task this claim about SPFs being bad for reefs. Uh, there is just, there are so many other things going on in terms of sea temperatures and pollution for sea reefs because they are being damaged. This is really not a major player in terms of SPS. So there's nothing special about this in terms of it saving the reefs. So don't buy it for that reason. Buy it simply because it's good. Also don't buy it because it's called it's clean. It's not clean. There's no such thing as clean beauty. How many times do I have to say this? It's just a nice SPF. It really is. And let me show it to you. So it's, they say it's mattifying. Um, let me put it on my arm here. And I would say slightly, but don't expect a sort of mattifying Smashbox primer finish. It's a lightweight cream, gently fragranced, goes in really easily. I wouldn't call that a matte finish, but it's not, it's not, it doesn't have the same sort of glowy texture as 
either the Tioxane or the um, or the Hourglass, which you might actually like. But guys are going to like that. Guys are going to like that because it does. It's it just gives you a sort of demi matte finish, as I say. I wouldn't call it matte because obviously matte for me means powdery. And then Dermalogica have an SPF 30 this year that is a hundred percent physical as well. Let me show it to you. And it looks like that. And this is the Dermalogica Invisible Physical Defense SPF 30. And this is because they know that so many of their Dermalogica fans who are having facials and go need to go out afterwards, when you've had a really deep cleanse facial or you've had some laser resurfacing, if your skin is sensitive, you're gonna want a physical SPF. A physical um, molecule of SPF is larger than a chemical one. So it tends not to clog pores as well. So it's an interesting one if you've got sensitive skin or skin prone to breakouts as well. But this is a this is a fairly thick cream. So this is going to be much better suited to dry skins. Again, you get that slight sort of silveriness. It tends to wear off when they rub in, um, but it does encourage you to rub, keep rubbing, which in a way is not that good for an SPF. Uh, lightly scented, which in a way is quite strange for a physical SPF. And I say that only because people who use physical Fs tend to have sensitive skin. So it's interesting that you put a fragrance in it, but you know, a lot of people aren't sensitive to fragrances. Um, and SPS can smell a bit summery, but that one doesn't. That smells more of skincare. And then, so let's celebrate the fact that Bliss is back in the UK. This is, and it's got American packaging. I absolutely love the American drugstore facts because in America, an SPF is seen as a drug, so it's approved by the Food and Drugs Administration. And I absolutely love their American packaging. Um, it just says what the active ingredient is and the percentage and the uses and the warnings and the directions and then the other information and active ingredients. And I love that. I really like, I wish that now we've left the EU, the UK can start doing this sort of packaging. I really like it. Anyway, I need to do a review of all of the Bliss products that have come back in the UK, but this is one I definitely like. This is the Bliss Block Star Invisible Daily Sunscreen SPF 30, 100% mineral, mineral broad spectrum SPF 30. Um, and it's a really, really nice one. It's a standard squeezy tube, but the reason I like it is because they've tinted it. And the advantage of tinting anything, and trust me, this would work on black skins as well, is the minute you put a mineral pigment, even if it's a sort of beigey, goldeny pigment, over um, an SPF, a physical SPF, instantly you knock back the, the silver sheen the Ghostbusters effect. So this is very similar, but an, in a way, a lighter tint of HelioCare. So this is coming for the HelioCare market. So I would use this in the summer. Look at the difference between my hands there. I would use this in the summer in place of makeup. That's going straight onto my must take it on holiday. Next time I go on holiday. Bliss, I love it. Absolutely gorgeous. And welcome back to the UK. I'm really um, impressed that they've come back. I've got some really nice products. That's a great one. And then I'm going to do a, a quick shout out to an existing physical one that I've liked and used a lot. And that is, um, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because again, I've got a problem with this brand in the same way that I've got a problem with Wren. And that is the Drunk Elephant Umbra Sheer Physical Daily Defense SPF 30. I've talked about it before. Uh, the founder of Drunk Elephant, she has this list of nasties and one of them is organic chemical sunscreens. But what you end up with is you end up with a really lovely, lightweight, easy to use, but yes, it does have a silver tint to it, SPF. I'm fragranced as well. She's got a thing about fragrance in skincare, which I quite like, I quite like that attitude. No fragrance in skincare, only from the neck up, because why risk it, I say, I know lots of people love it. There you go. I do love that tinted one. Look at that tinted one. It's really nice. Slightly soft focus as well. That's the Bliss one. So that's a shout out to an existing physical one. So in terms of physical ones there, you've got the Kate Somerville, the Dr. Dennis Gross, the Dermalogica, the Bliss, and the Drunk Elephant, which is actually a really good choice this year for really nice SPFs. Existing SPFs that I love, uh, don't forget that Fenty Visor, Hydra Visor, is an SPF 30, and it's amazing super lightweight i reviewed it last year and don't forget also if you're in the states you've got the CeraVe one that's the uh, broad spectrum spf 30 skin renewing day cream which has also got encapsulated retinol in 
Sarah V, please come to the UK. I'm begging you. We all need this in our lives. Really lightweight, actually got an almost sort of soft focus finish to it. It's almost like a soft focus serum. It's beautiful. If you're in the States, lucky, lucky, lucky you. And then in terms of top ups for an SPF 30, obviously you can absolutely 100% use a spray, but I wanted to give a shout out to sunscreen block on brush powders. And this is the Zoe mineral one. The interesting thing about this is they do tend to look quite, I mean, if you don't like a powder, you're gonna absolutely hate them. Um, and there's also brush on block as well. So you take the, the little file of mineral powder in and you stick it in the bottom and then you twist it and then there you go up comes the brush and then you brush the powder on the top i'm warning you right if you hate powders you're going to absolutely loathe this this one comes in three shades light medium and deep do try and find one that that matches your skin tone because it is a hundred percent titanium dark side so it's like applying a mineral powder during the day which i love you can buff on over your skin and back in the day i used to wear an spf 30 mineral powder the bare minerals original one all day, every day. I remember once being in the south of France, being caught out in the sun and the sun absolutely not touching my skin. So brush on block is really similar. So that's a nice way if you love physical sunscreens of doing a top up, but also look at the original Bare Minerals because you can use that as a top up and also look at brush on block as well. All my favorite SPF 30s, super lightweight, really super lightweight. I have to say, if I'm gonna choose my favorites, right. I would choose, without a doubt, La Roche-Posay as the lightest, beautiful, most gel-like, easy to wear one for all skin types, but particularly for oily skins prone to breakouts. The lightest in terms of every day is the Tioxane Advanced Perfecting Shield SPF 30. And then my favorite physical one, without a doubt, is the Bliss one because I do like it to be tinted so you get less of the Ghostbusters effect. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I'll put all the details of all the products down below. Coming next week, how about a Yes Style J&K Beauty Haul? So many of you have said to me, where do you buy your J&K? And by that, I mean not brands that are available in the UK. Where do you buy your Japanese and Korean skincare from? And often I try my arm at Amazon, providing it is an Amazon approved seller or Amazon are selling it on somebody else's behalf. And I've had no problem getting, for example, the gold had a labo. But when S Yes Style said to me, why don't you test us out? I'm testing it out. It did take three weeks to arrive, but oh my God, I've got some goodies. <laughs> I was so excited about it. So next week that video will be up. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and I'll see you soon.